Hey friends, welcome back. We are gonna do a garden tour. It's May, it's a new month, new garden tour time. I've got almost everything planted, either transplanted or direct sown. It's looking great. So I'm very excited to show you how everything's going. Let's go ahead and start over here in this section. So along here we have three grow bags of mint, chamomile, blue spice basil, stevia, carrots, and a wall of peas. All these with the black trellises are a wall of peas. We have determinate tomato plants, which are our aromas. And then behind them is a mass planting of cilantro. Because I'm thinking just a little bit of sun and mostly shade because the sun comes up from that way. I'm thinking that the cilantro will be happy and won't bolt quite so fast. And then every corner I direct sowed nasturtium seeds and there's only one that's popped up. So I wanted them to grow and kind of spill over the sides. I soaked the nasturtium seeds and I was like, oh, I soaked too many. Where am I going to put them? Well, let's make these some pretty corners. So <laughs> that's what we did. One's up so far. Onions are here. This whole bed is onions and shallots and leeks and they are doing awesome. They've, they're super thick, thickening up real good. Uh, patio tomatoes or micro tomatoes actually. Turnips. I direct sowed some nasturtiums in these pockets just so they'd fill up and spill over. I thought that'd be gorgeous. Uh, butterfly peas never came up and I looked and I was like oh butterfly peas aren't cold tolerant like regular peas like snap peas or snow peas. So I'm wondering if I started direct sowed them too soon uh, like three weeks before my average last frost date, and I'm wondering if they just, the seeds died or, or if they did sprout and then freeze. I don't know, but they're not here, they're not up, so there's nothing crawling on this right now, unfortunately. We'll give it more time though, and then I'll try some Malabar spinach or cucumber. Um, beets have come up, radishes have come up, carrots have come up, and the carrots are ready to thin. They've got their first set of true leaves on them now. So I can snip and do a better job of thinning this year because um, I want bigger carrots than what I usually get. And then that's garlic. Aren't those massive? And some of them have started to form their scapes. These are all hard neck, and so they'll all do garlic scapes. So you get a double harvest, a double harvest, <laughs> which I'm super excited for. Um, it's everything in this area, so it's over here. This is the medicinal herb area. There will be a separate video coming out, probably after this one, going over everything we're planting in this area. So I'm not gonna take the time right now because it, there's 28 spots, 28 different things possibly going in here. Uh, so that'll be interesting. I'm trying to learn more about that kind of thing. And then you see the compost over there. I need to pull it back and dig out the compost and then stick all that back in there, make it a little more tidy looking because it's ugly. <laughs> this line here near the compost, we have pole beans, golden acre cabbage, um, gladiolus bulbs, pole beans to go up these here, a great big old grape plant that was dead, but then it came back to life. Can you believe that? Carrots, pole beans, Celery, dahlias, dahlias haven't done anything yet. We got two currant bushes and a catnip. These are the, this is the pepper bed. It's hot peppers and bell peppers, sweet peppers, snacking peppers, all those kinds of things. I wanted enough peppers to fill this bed, no more, no less. I didn't really want extras to go somewhere else and I didn't want this bed to not be full. So. We did pretty good. I'm going to have more peppers than I need, so definitely sharing with people. <laughs> In these green stalks, we have three tiers of bush beans. I planted them all with dragon tongue bush beans, completely forgetting that I was going to do provider beans as well because the provider beans provide like crazy. It, it was insane last year. But that's okay. We'll put provider beans somewhere else. I got another plan for that, which you'll see. You'll see eventually. So both green stalks are the same. 
This tier has nothing in it yet. It's going to be like, I'm thinking of putting a few flowers in that I have. I haven't fully decided what I'm going to do. But so the bottom tier is nasturtiums. And we've had a few germinate. I didn't scarf, I soaked them, but I didn't scarify them. So I'm really thinking that scarifying is necessary because the first year I planted nasturtiums, I scarified and soaked and they all germinated. It was great. So I might have screwed up. <laughs> oh well. Let's look at this bed here. Okay, so this is the tomato bed. We have the tomatoes planted on the inside of the cattle panel. And on the outside are going to be our culinary herbs. And they're just going to go all the way around the entire back side of the L, basically. We have two tomatillo plants and then 11 tomato plants. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or 10, uh, 11, yeah. 11 tomato plants, indeterminate varieties here. Black Crim, Black Beauty, Thorn, Thorburn, and Sun Sugar, I think, are the only ones we're growing this year. There's a few Echinacea that have popped up, so those must be new ones. I didn't plant them, so they must have must be volunteers. And some calen vo volunteer Calendula. And then those onions are just overwintered onions that just keep on keeping on and giving seed every year. So that, that's cool. <laughs> and then over here will be cucumbers along the fence. And we got a little cabbage, uh, red acre cabbage coming in over there. All my cabbage died inside. I started six seeds and they all died. I was like, why? Out of six, why? And we got sweet potato over here. Strawberry in the laundry basket did not survive. So we're gonna put a sweet potato in there, or we did. Three sweet potato plants in this ottoman. These two grow bags with the trellises that are leaning. Our eggplants. The leaves are getting chewed up. The herbs we have planted so far is chive and it's blooming like crazy. It's gorgeous. And next to that is parsley, rosemary, Italian basil, marjoram, and then we have a gap. And then dill. The dill's come up. I need a water out here though because I, I direct sowed the dill. And then there's another small gap here. So I need to figure out what other herbs I want to put in here. Uh, savory and a whole bunch of oregano. Oregano has a lot of medicinal uses as well. So we're going to be doing a lot of stuff with this oregano and it spreads like crazy. So I got to keep it tamed, thyme and sage. And we're now in the back corner. The strawberries are here. We have three, one, one, three 100 gallon grow bags that are the size of garden beds. Like if a four by four was in a circle, then that's how big these are. So they're amazing. And three of them right here for all for strawberries and so many flowers and so many more strawberries already forming. Like we're about to be harvesting. These are June bearing. We're going to be harvesting in May for sure. It's, it's crazy. I mean, it's beautiful too. Like it's so exciting and they're happy. They're huge and green. I mean, like, they're taller than usual, and I'm not sure why. I didn't fertilize them. Anyways, see this pocket here on the fence? I haven't done anything. I topped them off with potting mix, but I haven't planted in them. Uh, I could. I just, don't, I just don't know what. So whatever extra flowers I had, I was just going to plant them in here. Um, so like I'm not sacrificing a vegetable plant that I planned on getting food from. And so if it didn't work out, it'd be okay. Um, if, I, if I planted a flower it, and it didn't work out, it would be okay. Instead of sacrificing a vegetable plant and it not working out. Because <clears throat> these don't stay hydrated, moist, moist for very long. And so the drip needs to be run often. But I don't have extra leftover flowers that are small enough. So next year, now I know, next year I need to start twice as many petunias. Putting a whole bunch of petunias in here, would that not be gorgeous? So it's empty right now. We'll see what happens. It might stay empty. 
uh, celery, borage. I'm trying to be even though even though everything's flowering, like tomatoes flower, strawberries flower, beans and peas all flower. The pollinators are already here. The peppers flower. Like everything, everything that produces fruit flowers. So the pollinators are already here, but they do love borage. So I thought let's bring a little pollinator action back here and attract them with some borage. I had an extra pot, so why not? Why not put a flower back here? This one's still empty. I think I'm gonna put a sweet potato plant in it. Cause this was kind of like a, mm, we'll see what happens. We'll see what I put in it. Pole bean, pole bean, celery, an aronia bush. I thought it was dead, but it's like it spread and grew up. Uh, Lucas, the old dog, the old black and white one, he trampled it. He just, he had no respect for the barriers of the garden and just walked right all over it. So pretty rude of him, but well, it, it looks like it's bouncing back. So that's good. We got great plants. We planted great plants together. We got one there, down there farther, getting shaded. Bad, bad spot to plant it. And another one over there, one, of, yeah. We got great plants all over the place. So, cause I, I was wanting the entire fence line, like this white vinyl is the neighbor's fence, but the brown picket is ours. And I wanted the fence all the way around to be covered with grapes. Instead of covered with flowers, covered with grapes would be awesome. So that was the goal. We'll see what happens. Sweet potatoes in the Home Depot buckets over there. Here, berry bushes. The two big ones are elderberry. They're very happy where they're at. And then two blackberries on the other side. Uh, I'm not gonna like go over there right now because it's gonna be like a whole project to get the pumpkin patch area set up because the raspberries are being stupid. I mean, they're doing what they're supposed to do, but it's not convenient for me because they're growing too much. So, anywho, I have to cut back the raspberries again and I think just rip them out of the ground, to be honest. Um, put the containers where I want them and kind of just get it organized and ready. I'm not in a super huge rush over there because we're not planting our pumpkins and stuff over there and our squash and zucchini and all that until the first week of June. The squash bugs are stupid here, insane, ridiculous. So are the vine borers. So I'm hoping that the vine borers and the squash bugs will be looking somewhere else because like my little seedlings of my squash plants won't be here. So they won't be attracted to this area. So they'll go somewhere else or die in the process because there's no food here for them. And uh, then when I plant mine later than usual, they'll be somewhere else at, at that point is my hope. And uh, if not, then I'll be trying to squash bug hunt as much as possible because otherwise I, I can't get any crop. Between the vine borer and the squash bug, I can't get any squashes. So uh, last year was a huge disappointment in how that turned out. So I want to do it different this year and see if it works. It just sucks. Like gardening, like you get to reset every year, but like, so like if you're playing a game, you get to just say, start over new game, try again and do it better. When it comes to gardening, you get to reset, but it's once a year. You don't get to start over till another year. So it kind of sucks that you just, you have to, and when you have failures, you have to wait a whole another year to try again, to try a different strategy and to hope there's a different outcome. And then you have to wait to see what happens and then you have to wait to try again over and over again until you figure it out. So that's one thing that sucks, but we'll get it eventually. If I had to take a year off, um, so like they're not in this area at all, then I might try to take a year off. I don't know. I don't know what's gonna work, but we're gonna keep trying. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that area. You see the tree, the pear tree? I am so proud of it. It's got four fruit on it right now, which means next year is probably gonna have a ton of fruit. And these strawberries, the birds will eat at them. So we're gonna to have to put the netting on. This is the second strawberry 
of the season and it's already been picked at, you see there? The first one was annihilated by the strawberries, by the birds. So netting has to go on. Bummer. It makes it more difficult and not as pretty, but necessary. Where's the button? Oh. We have this flower bed planted. Petunias and alyssum and marigolds starting to bloom. Cosmos and zinnias. Daisies, sedum, coreopsis, amaranth, another marigold, petunias throughout, yarrow right there. So it should be tall and short as you come this way was the goal. A few snapdragons here. These bushes are beautiful but thorny, so we thought about taking them out tried to dig one up and was like, yeah, no, that's not going to work too well. And it didn't come back all the way. So it looks like crap over here, but we have some snapdragons coming in at least. Geraniums, a zinnia finally bloomed. So we have calendula, volunteer calendula that I left. Bachelor Button and Coreopsis, Zinnia, Geraniums, planted in like blocks. And then that's the clover. Like clovers have white flowers or yellow flowers, I think, is what I've noticed. And I just thought it was pretty. Like, oh well, it's a weed, it's pretty. Look at it. The foliage is all green, the flowers are cute, and they close up at night and open during the day. It's a pretty bush. It was here when we moved in, so I don't know. I don't know what it is. And this side's similar. We have the bachelor button and coreopsis, geraniums, and zinnias. In there. Up here at the front porch, we have lilies here, and cosmos. Some gladiolus bulbs, I think, are coming up. But they're not perennial here, so I don't know why they're coming up. I wanted to move this back there because these are so tall, it's one of them all back there. But I saw those starting to come up and I was like, well, uh, I guess I won't move this. <laughs> and we have those, oh, that's a big frog. Oh, that scared the crap out of me. <laughs> See it? Wow. Okay, backing up. It's not gonna hurt me, it just scared me. <laughs> So volunteer calendula here, just letting it do its thing. The lilies, I don't like how they're leaning. They need more sun than they get over here. Uh, clover, I planted some petunias that I'm hoping fill in the space. Oh, the frog moved. And a hosta. And last part of the landscaping. Volunteer calendula that I left. We moved this daylily from here to here. And it fits because the daylily hosta daylily is the pattern. So a petunia interplanted. The hosta grew more than I realized since I planted these just a week ago. But the so I might have to move the petunia or I might have to cut some hosta leaves. Cause I forgot how big all these things get. Same thing with this one, and oh no, oh no, it's doing okay. Oh, I thought it was a broken stem, but it's not. I mean, maybe it is. Why is it leaning so much? Anyways. Yeah, these are filling in. These are filling in more than I realized. I shouldn't have planted so close to the hostas and daylilies. And then this one never grows. Dianthus is a perennial, it's beautiful. It's poppies and petunias planted, marigolds planted. One Dusty Miller survived this uh, seed starting process. One lonely snapdragon, we didn't have very many of those successfully grow either. Petunias, uh, another Dianthus, that's a perennial. 
and here we have it. There's the landscaping. Oh, volunteer Coreopsis <laughs> growing up between the rocks. I'll just let them do their thing. The Garden Tour Club is hosted by Gail Southern Living, and you can join it if you want to. There are monthly giveaways. Um, you can participate with your own videos, or just go to her page, click the playlist, watch them, comment, and you'll be entered, you'll be entered in the giveaway just by commenting. So almost everything is planted. So happy about that. A few open spots here and there we gotta fill in. No big deal, it'll happen when it happens. The corn's gonna go over in the pumpkin patch again, but the corn doesn't need the whole season to grow by, what was it last year? <sighs> planted in May and then by August we had all the corn and it was starting to brown and be done. So I'll get the corn planted when I get it planted. I still got time. So I'll get to that area when I get to it, it's no big deal. Anyways, this side is doing awesome. Got a little bit of space right over there. And a couple more. We have extra onions and sweet potatoes too. So I might just fill those up with, with those and that'll work. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this garden tour and I think I showed you everything. So feel free to like and subscribe. I hope your gardens are going growing as well as mine and I will see you later and have a wonderful day. Bye.